Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 53. <music> Floss Tube episode. I'm Liz and I'm here to talk to you about my cross stitch and my sewing and what I've been up to for the last two weeks. So yeah, anytime I take a break, um, I was off last week, I was on vacation. Um, I forget what I'm doing. It's only been two weeks. It feels like it's been 12. <laughs> so let's see if I remember how to film, how to film, how to speak, and how to film a floss tube. Um, <laughs> starting out great as usual. Um, yeah, so I had a week off of work and um, part of that week we went to San Antonio to um, the La Cantera Resort and Spa. I didn't use a spa, but uh, <laughs> we were at the resort for a couple of days and uh, that was super fun. My whole family, all my sisters and their kids um, were there and my parents and unfortunately um, the full day where we had booked a, cab a poolside cabana and... Um, you know, planned it being at the pool for like 12 hours. It rained all day. <laughs> so that was great. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for me and Rob, <clears throat> excuse me, for me and Rob, it didn't really matter. We don't have kids. Um, we can entertain ourselves, but you know, um, my poor sisters and their kids, you know, they were like, what are we going to do? It's raining. So after breakfast, we went and they had an arcade at our resort. And so we just, you know, um, bought a bunch of game cards and let the kids go crazy. And they were so bad at ball. It was hilarious. Um, they're all little. They're all under five or under six. And um, then they, there was like this Jurassic Park dinosaur game that they really wanted Rob to play with them. So I took some pictures of that. Um, that was really cute. And then finally it stopped raining and the sun came out a little bit um, around like 4 p.m. And so we were out at the pool from like, or maybe like, three I don't know it was a little bit early after or mid-afternoon um so we were out at the pool for a few hours before dinner um even though it was kind of like gray and whatever but it was fine and <laughs> it's a lot about our trip what else um Rob and I went out to eat and hung out in the bar a little bit our last night that was fun it was a really nice cool bar um <laughs> If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that. So we, our last night was Monday night. And so Monday afternoon, they had this like big welcome reception for some like conference um, that they were host hosting at the hotel. And it was like a super loud, like kind of reggae-ish band, like steel drum type band. And it was like a little on the annoying side, but like whatever, it's the middle of the afternoon. Um, well, that continued until like 10 p.m. And then uh, after the music stopped, apparently there was free drinks or something was happening because the crowd did not want to go back to their rooms. And so somebody went and got a guitar. Somebody brought a guitar to this conference and parked right outside our hotel room window. There was like a courtyard um, and started just taking requests and jam banding it um, until about 1 a.m., <laughs> So, you know, I heard a lot of great classics. Uh, I took a video of them um, doing Hotel California. It was just like, I appreciated their excitement to be at a conference and on vacation because I was on vacation, but like it was 12.45 a.m. and I wanted to go to sleep. <laughs> Anyways, I did not want to hear bad Hotel California is what I'm saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's been 
a lot of time talking about this trip, uh, but it was a really good time and I was really glad to be off work. And on the way to San Antonio, we stopped at the Tinsmith's Wife, which was excellent and got to see Wendy and chit chat with her in person. Um, got a little bit of haul I'll show you later on. And then I went to a quilt shop in San Antonio that was really near our hotel. I'm forgetting the name of it. I had been there before. It was in the same, it used to be, well, it's in its same location, but there used to be a cross stitch store in San Antonio that just recently closed down, um, Stitches from the Heart, that was in the same shopping center. So I had been to this quilt shop before when I had visited Stitches from the Heart. Um, anyways, I sad stitches from the heart isn't there anymore otherwise I could have made it two cross stitch stores in one trip but um yeah so that was our trip other than that I've been working and I've been sewing a lot I have been doing a lot of quilting <laughs> so I'll show you that in this video and also of course I've been doing a lot of stitching my streak remains I'm still stitching every single day so I've got a lot of stitching stuff to show you um, I also have a lot of happy mail that came in in the last two weeks, a lot of haul, um, a fun little, I don't know, a fun little surprise later on. Hopefully you'll like it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like I need to stop talking about annoyances on vacation and just like dive into the crafty goodness. So let's get started. Okay, so the first fully finished item that I want to share with you is one that I had almost done in my last video. And that is this Today Forever. And this is heart and hand. I don't have the chart near me anymore. I think I already put it away. Um, but this is one of their sweet little um, wedding charts and I stitched this for my cousin Abby and her fiance Todd um, they're getting married in just three weeks so I wanted to make her a little handmade wedding gift and so I had it all done I just needed to stuff it so um, I just used um, polyfill for this because um, I just wanted it to hold its shape really well that way she can like sit it up on a shelf or she can figure out what she wants to do with it but I just wanted it to you know hold its shape so um, I modified the color slightly, um, just to what I had, and, um, I used Lady Dot Creates Rick Rack, Vanilla Rick Rack, and I think this is the Ballet Pink Velveteen from Lady Dot. Um, I just love how this turned out, so, um, I know, think Abby watches these, so, Abby. <laughs> That's why I haven't shared it on Instagram yet, but I'll... Um, send it off to her in a couple of weeks and then I can show it on Instagram. <laughs> anyways, that's my first little finish. Next up is the quilt you guys have seen. <laughs> but it's finally fully finished. I just had to get the binding on and so I went ahead with this um, blue polka dot binding to match the rest of the quilt. <laughs> I love this thing. So um, this uh, is a Lori Holt quilt pattern out of the Spelling Bee book. And um, yeah, it's for my nephew, Ben, my soon to be. He's uh, my sister's due in just about a month. So soon to be. Um, yeah, so I know I've shown you guys this before, but I just wanted to show it all fully finished. And now it just needs to get washed and walk down the street to my sister's house. Okay, next up, <laughs> I made a project bag. I made a wedding themed project bag, engagement themed. Look how cute. So um, I don't know if it was two videos ago, but I showed this fabric and I was like, somebody sent me this fabric from Spoonflower. I, there wasn't a note. I don't know who it's from. Well, it was from Mariana. Um, she let me know. And um, it's adorable. And I just knew I needed to make a project bag to hold um, whenever I pick out like a wedding sampler or a wedding project that I want to stitch on <laughs> for myself. Um, but I needed a bag for it. So I used this pink gingham can't remember the fabric name. I think it's a Riley Blake. Um, this pink gingham to go with the super cute fabric. And then I used an aqua zipper because, I mean, I felt like it was just perfect. So this is my fun new project bag. So thank you again, Mariana, for the fabric. I love it. 
Oh, and I guess I should mention, um, I did not use my exact project bag tutorial. I used all the measurements, like for the finished size. The only thing I did different is that um, I did, uh, I added the binding on afterwards instead of folding the back around to do the binding because I wanted the front and back to have the same fabric and I wanted the binding to be the pink. So otherwise I used my tutorial. I just added the binding on as a separate step rather than folding it around from the back. So that's my project bag. Okay, and then I have a finish that's not yet fully finished, so I'm gonna show it to you now. And that is this table runner. <laughs> I'll insert a picture so you can see the whole thing, but how cute is this? I love it. I love these fabrics. Um, this is a line of fabrics called Tiny Treaters by Riley Blake, and I think it's Jill Howarth who, um, Let's see, it doesn't tell me on here, does it? But I think it's Jill Howarth who designed the fabric, but it's Riley Blake fabric. And I used this quilt kit, this Happy Haunting Table Runner kit that I bought on Etsy. Um, I'll link it below if you're interested. Um, this is like the cutest little packaging. And so in here is just my binding and my backing. Um, the fabric or the kit doesn't come with backing. I just bought a piece and shoved it in here. So I have it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I really wanted that done by Halloween. And um, it's just been sitting up on my shelf for like a month or two since I got it. And the other night when we got home from our trip on Tuesday, yeah, on Tuesday evening, I was like, man, I feel like I didn't sew enough this week of vacation like I want to sew some more and so I was like let me see how long this table runner will take to make and I made it in three hours so <laughs> if anyone's thinking about getting this kit and making it three hours is apparently all you need or that's all I needed so um yeah I just need to make a quilting appointment so I can get it all quilted up and bound and ready for my table for just a couple months from now can't believe summer's almost over um it really hasn't been like a normal summer here. It's been so rainy and weird. So I guess, I don't know. I guess I'm just like sad that, I don't know. I didn't feel like we had like a real summer. Um, it's also still another like COVID summer, even though I've traveled a little bit more, you know, than I have in the past, but now, I don't know. Anyways, let's not talk about COVID anymore. Um, but yes, those are all the finishes. Let me get into cross stitch whips and then I have another quilt whip. So let's do that. First up in the whips is Fourth Day of Christmas by Liz Matthews. And I was texting Jen from Two Tall Stitchers last night and I was like, I might be able to finish this tonight. I just need a few more hours. I didn't finish it, Jen, in case you were curious. <laughs> Did not get it done, but that's okay. Um, I'm very close. I am stitching mine on 40 Count Fog by Picture This Plus with all of the called for DMC. And it's just gorgeous. I love this one so much. So I just have to finish Joy. And then there's a few holly leaves and music notes. Um, and that's it. So um, yeah, I should have this one done very soon. I'm very excited about it. And then I cannot wait to do this tree finish because I have that glass flower frog. Um, I'm ready to go. So I'm excited to get this one done. So hopefully I can get this one done this week, assuming I don't get distracted. <laughs> I was watching um, Nicola Bumble Stitches Whip Parade last night and she just kept showing, you know, like she was doing her full whip parade and she kept showing whips that just had a little bit and she's like, I guess I got distracted. <laughs> I'm like, yes, exactly. You get distracted. That's why am I preaching to the choir? You all know how it is. But yeah, you're like, wait, I love this. What happened? And you're like, oh, I found something else to do and forgot this existed. So this is not going to happen to this. This one's getting done. <laughs> Next up is my Cricut Collection Sugar Cookies. And I know it's not Jolly July or Christmas in July anymore, but I've still been working on Christmas. <laughs> so um, 
I've made a little bit more progress on this one. I can't actually remember where I was last time I showed it to you, but I know I got at least one or two more letters done. And I love it. I love that little Santa moon cookie. Um, I mean, it's all so cute. I am stitching this one on 40 count r and Lucky Penny with all of the called for DMC floss. And I have a vision in my head for how I want to finish this as like a sign for my kitchen. So I really need to get this one done. This year, I just have two and a third, two and a quarter more letters to do. So I feel like I can get that done. Yeah, don't get distracted. <laughs> okay, and then somewhere in the last two weeks, I had a new start. And I started Sarah Barker 1840 by Needlework Press. And I was drawn to this chart. I saw, um, I cannot remember her name. I have it favorited on Instagram, but um, I believe she's a Russian stitcher. Um, I saw her stitching this and she actually changed the colors, which looks amazing. But I ended up going with just the dinky dyes. But I saw her stitching this and I just thought the border was so cool. Isn't that the craziest border? Um, and I just really wanted to stitch it. So I have a start on this. It's also bigger than it seems. It's like 224 by 231. So this is a pretty big girl. Um, but I got a start. <laughs> and let's see. Here is my start. So I am stitching mine on 40 count Brenda's Brew by r and R. I had an extra fat quarter of this from last year when I was starting my Winter Rose Manor and um, my first fat quarter got lost in the mail from Tin Swiss Wife. So I asked her to sell me another one and send it and that one got here immediately. And then this one showed up a couple months later. <laughs> and now I was like, well, I'll find something fun to do with this fat quarter and I feel like I love it with these colors. Um, I just feel like they pop really well. So the called for color I think is Parchment by Weeks, which is pretty light, um, but I don't know. I like my Brenda's Brew, my brown. So I'm using all of the called for Dinky Dye Silk, um, which are just gorgeous. They're such weird colors, let me show you. Like they're not colors I would have just like picked out, you know, but, um, they go really well together once like they're all stitched up and, but like, aren't they kind of crazy looking? <laughs> oh, there's a pretty pinks and browns and greens and blues. Yeah. Um, I'm don't know exactly where this yellow is used. I think it's sparingly. <laughs> I think it's only in a couple spots. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, that's my start on Sarah Barker. Okay, so this next one I stitched on is my Plum Street Sampler's Labor for Learning, which is just the sweetest little sampler. And here is where I'm at with that one. So cute. I'm stitching this one on a 36 count nougat by Seraphim Fabrics, and I'm using all the called for over dyed floss. And I have to do, basically the reason this lady is missing a head is because everything up here is all over one and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you guys know I love my over one. <laughs> um, I'm also out of the dark red color, um, which has prevented filling in a few details up here. So I need to order some more ruby slipper. But yeah, that's where I'm at with labor for learning. Next up, I decided to pull out a Halloween whip and I um, worked on Cats on Parade. So I actually pulled this one out specifically because it was a one color project and it was fall um, and I felt like I'm stitching on a fall thing. Um, and I brought this with me to San Antonio because I knew one floss, you know, it just and then I could just outline and fill in. Um, and so I actually didn't do too much stitching on our trip, but um, here is where cats on parade is at. So you can see I was just outlining and filling in. So yeah, 
Um, I'm stitching this one on a 36 count, let's see, Vintage Sugared Ginger by Lakeside. Vintage Sugared Ginger, which is just a very, let me see if I can get the color more accurate. Yeah, right here. It's a very like melony, <laughs> that's my sister's name, but I mean M-E-L-O-N-Y, melony. <laughs> cantaloupe -y. I don't know. It's like a cantaloupe color, I feel like. <laughs> so, um, I think, what am I using? I think I'm using Espresso Bean by Gast as my kind of black-brown. I don't remember if that was called for or not. Let's see. Yeah, Gentle Arts Espresso Bean. I did not get creative. I'm using the call for. <laughs> so that is my Cats on Parade. Okay, so I've also been working on a new quilt. Um, I showed you guys a couple weeks ago that I accidentally bought the same Fat Quarter bundle twice. So nice, I bought it twice. The Cozy and Magical by um, Art Gallery, Maureen Cracknell. Um, and I told you guys I wanted to uh, join in her quilt along um, for, uh, forgetting everything. I'll put it on the screen, but there's a quilt pattern that I bought and that I started making. Um, I'm a little ahead of the quilt along. I just wanted to get started. So I'm, I'm following the quilt along in my head, but I'm early. <laughs> so if you want to join, there's still time to go get everything and, um, sign up, but, um, I'm just, I'm just doing mine early. <laughs> So yeah, so I'll put a picture up of the of the quilt pattern. Um, and I got everything cut out um, a week or so ago. And then over the last week, I've just been putting together blocks, sitting down, putting together a few blocks. And so I think I have nine, eight or nine of the blocks and I need 20 of them. Um, and so I thought I would just show you a few of my blocks. So this one is a bungalow a little bungalow and I um, fussy cut some nutcrackers to go in the doorway and some little presents for the windows. Um, <laughs> look how cute. So this is all out of Maureen Cracknell's Cozy and Magical. Um, oh, here's another little bungalow. And then there's some log cabins. So here's one of the log cabins. There's just two style of houses and you make 10 of each. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyways, I've made about eight or nine, I think. And so I've got to make 20 of them and then I can put that quilt together. I'm very excited about it. It might be a gift. We'll see how I feel when I finish it, if I really, really want to keep it or if I'm going to give it away. <laughs> no, I'm going to give it away. I'm going to be good. Um, I have a whole other fat quarter bundle that I can make myself something with. Um, yeah, so I'll link the pattern and the fabric below if you're interested because it's gorgeous. <laughs> Okay, so that was everything I worked on the last two weeks, um, which feels like a lot. <laughs> I continue to want to sew and cross stitch every single day and I love it. So update, we're not going back to the office the day after Labor Day. That's gotten postponed due to current COVID situation. So um, no plans to change my schedule right now. It'll still kind of just be every week, um, assuming I have stuff to talk about. And then um, if and when, you know, my schedule changes, of course, I'll let you guys know. But for now, I'll be here. <laughs> so I just thought I'd mention that. Um, so let me get into all the stuff that came in the mail this week and all the stuff I bought in person this week. Um, I got some things and I want to start with kind of a weird, fun, <laughs> it's not that weird. It's a fun thing. Um, I... Uh, I talked about this in my Christmas uh, Stitch With Me live video that I did a million years ago. No, not a million years ago, six months ago. Um, <laughs> and I talked about how I used to design and sell enamel pins on Etsy. In addition to, well, uh, mostly I sold stickers. I designed and sold stickers, but I also started doing some enamel pins um, before I shut down my shop. And I was like, I why would I, why can't I just do that and make it a needle minder? Um, and so I finally did that. <laughs> I wanted to have something to bring with me um, 
as just like a gift or I don't know, just like as a thing to give people who came up to me at the retreat and wanted to say hi. So spoiler alert, if you're going to the Kansas City um, Quilter Station retreat, um, you'll get one of these from me. <laughs> so um, let me just show it to you. I'm like, I don't know why I feel weird about this, but it, I don't know, it's kind of like, whatever, here. Um, I made a needle minder and that's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, I hope that's focusing. Um, I'll insert a picture of it if it doesn't focus, but it's just a little pennant that says stitch um, and in tiny letters, <laughs> in tiny letters, it says Elizabeth Ann can stitch. Um, and I think it's adorable. So I drew this on my iPad and um, had it made, had it manufactured at an enamel pin company. Um, <laughs> and so here's, uh, this is the weird part. So it's a ma so I ordered it as a magnet magnetic enamel pin. So um, you know you can wear it like a normal enamel pin, just like that. Um, but also you can put it on your fabric, um, on your stitching, and use it as a needle minder. But because it's so long, they sent these two um, magnets with it, which I don't know if that's annoying or useful, but I don't know. They're both on there. Um, so that's what it kind of like just looks like as is, and this is what it looks like like on something and I just think it's adorable so um I bought extras it, like so I bought enough to take with me to Kansas City to um give away to people I meet and I've given a few away to the people who came to my um virtual meetup um two weeks ago and so I guess what I'm wondering so I have some extras is anyone interested in these? If they are, I can resuscitate my Etsy and list them, um, I don't know, maybe $10 including shipping, something like that. I don't know. Um, I have to figure out how to price them because, yeah, anyways, but in like how much it'll cost me to ship them. <laughs> um, but if anyone's interested, let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, I'll just continue to give these away <laughs> when I meet people, but um, I don't know. I think they're really cute. And they're not like super heavy duty. They, I mean, they hold your needle, but they won't like hold a pair of scissors or anything. So they're just like a little, like just a needle minder. Or in my case, I'm going to wear mine as an enamel pin. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just think it's cute. So anyways, that's my fun little um, merch. Is this my first merch? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so let's get into the happy mail because, oh my gosh, you guys, I gave away um, a lot of fun things on my one year anniversary episode and I got so many wonderful thank you notes in the mail, which is so nice and just makes me feel guilty because I am the absolute worst at sending out thank you notes. I, I will thank you profusely over email and Instagram and in person, but so bad at sending out thank you notes. I need to order some cute ones or something to have on hand. But so many people sent me so many cute ones and they look like so many of these look handmade and they're beautiful. This one was from Mary. Mary, that's gorgeous. Thank you. And then I got one from Debbie. This also looks like she may have made it. It's gorgeous watercolor paper. Anyways. Oh, thank you, Debbie. And I got this one from Eva with a little shipping money, which is so unnecessary. <laughs> thank you, Eva. But you don't have to do that. It's okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but thank you. And then Sharon sent this gorgeous card. It's congratulations, sparkle card. And she sent me a gift from the Buckeye State, which was a skein of Buckeye Scarlet. How cute is that? Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> But just so you guys know, if you ever want to give away, you don't have to send me anything. Just enjoy. <laughs> but I so, but thank you. Thank you. Everyone is so nice. Okay. And then Mandy. Mandy sent me this card. And Mandy, who is Jackalope Stitches, um, she and I were talking on Instagram. Uh, and she was telling me about how she entered a piece into her local, like, state fair. 
and I was like, what piece? And it was, um, I'm gonna spoil it. It was this one, Queen of Freedom. And I was admiring it and she offered to send me her chart. Well, I don't even know if she offered. I just was like, oh my gosh, one day I want to stitch that. And then she was like, can I have your address? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and she sent me this chart. Guys, I am so excited. This is an out of print one, I believe. Um, I think it's kind of hard to find. So after I stitch it, I will certainly pass it on to one of you guys. I'll do a giveaway or, you know, a drawing or something. Um... Of course, that might be in a while because I'm a slow Mirabilia stitcher, but I am so excited. Um, so not only did she send me this, she sent me a matching handmade project bag that is gorgeous. Look at this. <sighs> Look at these tiny half square triangles. Mandy, your piecing is impeccable. Um... So yeah, just like the most perfect project bag ever for this bag. Um, and this is the backing. Oh my gosh. This is super special. I got a little overwhelmed when I got it in the mail yesterday. I was like, Rob, <laughs> I was like freaking out a little bit. Um, thank you, Mandy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting like a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, um, especially because yesterday I hadn't checked the mail in a while and so I got all of these cards and these things in the mail at once and it is so special and so overwhelming and I feel guilty and I'm like I don't deserve this but then you know I try to get over that um, but like thank you thank you anyways Andy I already told you thank you but thank you <laughs> then I have one more thing <laughs> no two more things ah there's a lot in the mail over the last two weeks okay so Edette Edette, um, she sent me this super cute postcard. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Um, and then she had heard me talking about how I need to find some fun little charms to make project like zipper bag pulls. Let me grab one. So like for my new project bag, I wanted to make some little like charms and things as like zipper pulls. And so she sent me the cutest baggie of gifts. And even um, the other day, she sent me a couple extras she made of little strawberries. Um, she sent me, oh, just like she sent me some floss tags she made. And then um, supplies to make my own um, little uh, zipper pull charms. So some little jump rings and some lobster claws. And look at this camper charm she sent. Oh my God, that's cute. Um, and so she sent some supplies and some stuff that were pre-made. Like these guys are, oh my gosh, look. There's a little kitty cat face and a little, oh gosh, you can't see these. Hold on, let me take them out. So here are some kitty cats. <laughs> and then just some super cute little, um, oops, how do I turn it around? There we go some little sparkles, some red and blue, and a lot more little um, charms that have the little sparkles on them that I can add to other stuff. So I'm all set for making um, bag charms and I'm very excited about it. So thank you, Edette. Oh, and she also sent me the super cute chart. Sorry, I forgot this was also in the bag. Um, she just wanted to pass it along because I don't, I think she said she already had stitched it or she decided she wasn't going to, but it's a super cute Teresa Coquit chart. Um, stew the snowman. <laughs> so thank you. Um, and then the last bit of happy mail came to me all the way from Australia, right? Australia. Yeah. I was like, wait, not New Zealand. Um, no, Australia. And, um, this came from Andrea and look at the very Australia card she sent me. I love it. Aren't koalas supposed to be kind of mean though, right? Like they look so super soft and cuddly, but they're like, kind of mean or no is that not true <laughs> um Andrea Andrea made me three project bags and they are gorgeous um 
and so well done. I think she said she used my tutorial, right? Andrea, you said you used, um, they look like they were, they're done in the same style I do. And they're so cute. So this one is like Texas wildflowers. So there's like blue bonnets and Indian paintbrushes and um, I don't know what the yellow and orange ones are. I forgot. Tigers? I don't know. Andrea, Andrea used to live in Lubbock. Um, now she lives in Australia. So Andrea, you'll have to remind me. What are the yellow and orange ones? anyways so she sent me a texas wildflower bag and she has her little tag it says made with love so cute and then she sent me this really pretty colorful one um and the backing fabric is this amazing australia print i'm obsessed <laughs> how fun I love this so much. Like the, is that a raccoon or a fox? I don't even know all the Australian animals. I mean, obviously I know the kangaroo, but like, what is this guy? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And then she sent me another Texas themed one with a pattern in it. Let me take the pattern out. So I'll show you that in a second. So this is the third bag with this amazing blue bonnet and Texas flag fabric um, and her little tag. And in it, she had this pattern called the Lone Star Sampler, which I absolutely love. Look how cool that is. I'm totally going to have to do this one day. Just a little Texas sampler. So we've got the Alamo, of course, um, the state bird, chili peppers, cowboy boots, all the big cities. All those, those are all done in backstitch. Oh, my backstitch is not good. Oh my gosh, there's so much backstitch on this. When was this chart from? Let's see, it says it's Indigo Rose. Catherine Strickler was the designer. I don't know if I see a year. Yeah, I don't know, but I can't wait. I think this is gorgeous. I love this. So it will definitely stay in my Texas project bag until I stitch it or in, and while I stitch it. <laughs> So, um, Andrea, thank you. Thank you all the way from your old home state to Australia. <laughs> okay, so let's talk haul for a minute because I got some stuff. Um, I ordered that binding for Ben's quilt from the Fat Quarter Shop. And then they also had just listed all of the months of the Blackbird Design stockings. And so I went ahead and got June, which is my birthday month. And um, I've never done any of the little Blackbird Design stockings, but I love them. I think it's Brenda from uh, Brenda and Laura who has tons of them on her ring and they're all so gorgeous and I really wanted one. And so I bought this and I didn't even realize <laughs> that they're like themed um, like for the month. Like, I mean, obviously they're themed for the month, but I didn't realize that there was a wedding themed one in here. So this one right here is a double wedding ring quilt celebrating kind of wedding season, which June is, you know, kind of known for and probably will end up being my wedding month in 2022. I think it's looking like June 2022. So um, I'm totally stitching this and hanging it on the tree as an ornament or something like that. I love it. So and then it also has a little stork um, uh, stocking and then some like honeysuckle flowers. So I got this chart, which I love, and I'm excited to do one of their stockings. I've never done one. Uh, and then also in the last two weeks, I went over to Austin Sewing, which is a local quilt shop and sewing machine store here in Austin. And I got two panels from Ruby Star Society and they're Christmas themed holiday panels. And actually, I wonder if I should I should probably just put a picture up because they're gonna be kind of too big to hold up. So um, the first panel I got is four fat quarters that you can cut apart and use for whatever you want. So it's just like a yard panel of these pre-printed fat quarter sized, um, sized panels. <laughs> I don't know. And I just really love the prints of them. I think they're so cute. And then the second one is a kind of like quilt square, quilt starter type center block um, type prints. Like, so what I think I'm going to do is with this 
um, kind of block print one is I'm going to cut it apart and then use the fat quarters as well as fabrics from my stash to kind of create like a log cabin -y style border around them and then put them back together and make like kind of a Christmas wall hanging I think out of them. I think that's my plan. Um, also Rob really loves octopi. Octopuses? <laughs> I hate saying octopi. <laughs> I don't know why. It was so pretentious. Uh, but it's probably the right way to say it, right? Anyways, um, and so one of them, you know, has the octopus with the Christmas lights on it. I just thought it's really cute. And when do we combine our love of Christmas and octopuses, octopi? We don't. So we do here in this fabric, so it's perfect. <laughs> Anyways, that's, that's my thought behind this fabric. I love it. Okay, and so then I also went to that quilt store in San Antonio that I told you about, and I got this um, by Annie pattern called Zip It Up, which is like a big um, zippered folder, basically, and I kind of felt like I could make um, each, make this size so that each of these was like a project bag size, and then it's like a travel, a fancy travel project bag with two, space for two projects. Um... So I'm very excited about this. Um, I might try and make this sometime soon. Yeah. Anyways, sorry. But that, that's why I got this. Um, this zip it up pattern. It's like a zipper folder. And then I also could not pass up this kitty corn charm pack. Um, it's just so stinking cute and I really want to make a project bag and so I was hoping actually that they had a mini charm pack which is like at the two and a half square two and a half inch squares um but I can just cut this down um into two and a half inch squares if I want to make you know the kind of patchwork um style project bags that Nicola from Bumble Stitches makes um we'll see or maybe I'll just make like a wall I don't know. I haven't decided. I just, you know, I just wanted it. It's so cute and retro. And Rob, I posted this on Instagram. Rob has requested more Halloween decor. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, although he probably would prefer it be like super spooky and gory. And I'm like, mm, cutesy. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> he's going to get what he gets <laughs> unless he comes up with stuff. <laughs> And then I also got this piece of fabric, which I just thought was gorgeous. This just kind of like black and white etchings almost just like, I don't know, just really pretty. So I got this piece of black and white fabric and that was my little quilt shop haul. And then I went to the Tinsmith's Wife <laughs> and I actually really didn't get too much. Um, everybody was like, what'd you get? What'd you get? Just a few things. So let me show you. Um, I got a silk. I got a color for Sarah Barker, my new start, um, that I was missing. So, um, check. Got that dinky dye silk. And then I got some Lady Dot trims. I got some Brick House pom-poms because I love this red. So I wanted some more red pom-poms. And then I got her Brick House tiny red rickrack. I just thought this was so cool. So, yeah. I've never worked with the teeny tiny rickrack, so I'm going to try that out. And then I got two fat quarters of fabric. Um, I got a new to me fabric. So fiber on a whim, affogato, affogato. So here is, here's this one. I'm gonna hold it back here so it's the true color. Yeah, it's really pretty. It feels really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I've never worked with fiber on a whim before. But I've started seeing it um, available more and more. So um, yeah, hope, I'm assuming I'll like it. And then I'll have yet another fabric tire to obsess over and buy a bunch of fabric from. <laughs> and then I also got this piece of Weeks Dye Works Linen in Linen, which is just a really nice um, light neutral. And this one is also a 36. Yep, also a 36 count. And I do believe this is... The new weeks. I don't have a selvage edge on this. Oh no, I do have a selvage edge. It's the old weeks. For some reason, it doesn't feel as floppy as um, normal old weeks, which is why I was like, yeah, I'm fine with whatever base it is. I'll buy it. Um, but yeah, I think it is the older weeks, but it doesn't feel quite as soft for some reason as some of the other colors. But yes, this is the linen color. So that's all I got at 
um, Tim Smith's wife. I had kind of thought about picking out a needlepoint project while I was there. I think I mentioned that somewhere. I don't remember, but I ultimately decided against it because I have so many projects that I'm currently stitching on and so many things kitted that I want to get to that it's like overwhelming how much I want to stitch right now. And I was like, I cannot add another new hobby into the mix or I'm going to get distracted from all the stuff I have going on and that I want to be stitching on. So I will get a needlepoint project at some point because they have so many great ones, but not this time. Okay, that was the haul. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, let's do a giveaway. So in honor of my very exciting little needle minders coming in, um, I'm gonna give five of these away. So if you want to win a needle minder, what, yeah, let's just use the word needle minder. Um, <laughs> use needle minder in your comment and I'll know you want to be entered to win the needle minder com uh, giveaway and um, I'll pick five winners in my next video and send you guys some of these. So yeah, let's do that. That'll be easy. Just be a subscriber, like the video and leave a comment using the keyword and that's how I'll know you want to be entered. Um, other than that, I think we've reached the end of this gigantic pile of mess. My craft room looks insane right now. And it's like so hard to manage. Every time I film, it gets harder and harder to find a place for everything. <sighs> I wish I had like, a, like I'm so jealous of houses with like basements. Like people have basement craft rooms because basements are like the hole underneath of your house, right? So they're so spacious. I have a 10 by 10 guest bedroom. <laughs> And that should be fine. Like, not. I know everybody doesn't even have that, right? Like, people have, like, their dining room table or just, like, a set of drawers somewhere. And so I feel like I'm spoiled with a 10 by 10 bedroom, and yet I cannot keep everything contained. I, like, is there such a thing as a professional craft organizer? Like, is there someone I can hire to come in here and tell me how to store things so that I can fit more stuff and put stuff away easily because... Whew. Anyways, this craft room is out of control. Um, I love it, but like, I've got to do like a deep clean every time I want to work on something. <laughs> Anyways, this has been Elizabeth complains about her craft corner. <laughs> okay, I'm rambling, so I'm gonna end it. Um, no wedding updates other than probably June 2022. And I think we're pretty close to narrowing down a venue. So I'll share more about that when I have updates. But yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Time to end it. Um, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.